FC Porto have announced the sale of their dynamic and very talented midfielder Fabio Vieira to Arsenal in a move that kinda came out of nowhere. Well, in comparison to how most transfers go nowadays, with months of build-up and speculation only for the move to be all but confirmed by Twitter accounts prior to the club announcement, I mean, this one kinda came out of nowhere in that context, right? Hey, I'm Adrian, by the way, welcome to Rabona TV, where today we're gonna go through yet another signing from the Primera Liga from Portugal that we'll call the Premier League home very soon, Fabio Vieira from Porto. Now, if we're talking Benfica players, I'm your boy, and I can do this all by myself. Thank you very much. But when we're talking players from the rivals, I can give you a very good idea for sure, but nobody wants to hear from a rival such as myself. So that's why today we brought in none other than Zach Lowy, the co-creator of Breaking the Lines, whom you can find on Twitter, YouTube, and not to mention their various podcasts. With that out of the way, let's get to this chat about Fabio Vieira with Zach. So Zach, let's start by getting yes. people's brains up and running on Fabio Vieira with the real basics. You know, when looking at his heat maps, yep. and of course, from my own experience watching him and your own, he's a central midfielder right. that kind of likes to float to the right. But what position would you say brings out the best in Fabio Vieira? It's a tricky one. I think that he's probably a natural attacking midfielder. Uh, perhaps, you know, playing further forward, probably in a 10 role. But, uh, you know, ironically, we haven't really seen him perhaps play that, that position that much under um, Sergio Conceição because, you know, he, Porto typically do not play with the 4-2-3-1. So he's showcased that he can do a job in, in multiple positions. He's played uh, as a left-sided midfielder, you know, shall we say a wide playmaker. Uh, he's played as kind of a second striker in the Medi Taremi role, often benching Taremi. Um, so, you know, I think that he's got a unique set of uh, capabilities as a, as a player. And um, and yeah, I'd pr probably say his best position is as that number 10, just because he's so gifted at what number 10s do, right? Whether that's Ozil or Riquelme, you know, he's a player who's capable of unlocking defenses with just a, a brilliant uh, pass and, you know, also just driving in with the ball. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I would say. Now you mentioned Ozil, is that a player that you think that Arsenal supporters could look to as far as similarities in how he plays? Maybe not necessarily as far as his work rate goes, but as far as his <laughs> style of play, you could look towards Ozil as sort of inspiration for him? Yeah, I think so. I think I would say perhaps Ozil, as well as some, you know, Portuguese players in the past. I would say, you know, you've got Bruno Fernandes, a current player, but also Bernardo Silva, Rui Costa, Deco. I think that there's a lot of similarities in, in all those players when it comes to Fabio. You know, perhaps they, maybe not unique to Portugal, but but definitely something that they produce uh, a wide variety of, which is, you know, those kind of smaller uh, midfielders who, you know, don't necessarily thrive on their physical speed or, or power, but, but you know, have that rare blend of, I think, of, of intelligence, of vision, you know, ability to really uh, find a teammate in the most crowded areas. Would you say that that's where he's what he's best at, Zach? Is that he is he can handle the pressure, he can handle being surrounded by opponents, and he can find a way to either wriggle out through his dribbling or string a pass yes. right through the defenders. Yeah, I think so. I think that that's definitely something that makes him unique as a player, and it's something that uh, you know I, I I was saying you know before this season, um, you know. Fabio has, yes, obviously this has been the first season where Fabio has actually become, you know, an important player at Porto. You know, looking at what he was doing with Portugal's, you know, runs to the U19 Euros final in 2019 or their U21 Euros final in 2021, he was that player, I think, you know, capable of, of facing a deep block and just, yeah, unlocking it with just one pass and I think that's something that's really hard to find in a 22 year old like Fabio Vieira. Yeah it really is difficult to find and just looking at his stats right away that would be sort of the assumption you would make is that he's this playmaker and he's obviously incredibly gifted when it comes to passing and his vision but how is he in the finish because from what I've seen looking through his goals at Porto especially and just watching Liga he seems to have an eye for the goal from distance doesn't he? Yep. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think he's much better at, you know, providing an assist than providing a goal. But I do think that's 
yeah, as you mentioned, he's, I think in a lot of the goals that he scored, uh, some of them coming from set piece situations, some of them coming from, you know, just outside the box. I do think that's perhaps an, an area where, you know, Arsenal are, are looking at, I think they realize that, you know, if, if you're, if you want to be a truly great team, you need to ha have goals come from multiple areas. You know, you can't just be relying on like Bukai Osaka, um, you know, all the time or, or whatever player. You need to have versatility and just players who, who, right, whether they're playing in midfield, whether they're playing on the wing, whether they're playing as a center forward, they, they know how to find the back of the net. I think that's that's definitely an area for improvement, uh, though, where, where I think Fabio can definitely make some headway. I think that, you know, by increasing that goals tally, and also, I mean, yes, it, it's great to, you know, have that, you know, ability to find the back of the net from from distance, but also just for, for him to take that next step to become, you know, a regular in, in Arsenal, but also in Portugal's senior team. I think that by getting into the box more and, you know, trying to pick out these good shooting positions, that's definitely something that could, you know, make or break it with regards to his success. I think that by increasing his goal tally, uh, you know, yes, he could, he could honestly become one of the uh, best talents in world football, one of the best one of the best players in the Premier League as well. And so you mentioned that being one of the areas where he can improve, and I would agree with you, maybe, you know, arriving late in the box for cutbacks, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. But what are some other areas that you see as areas that Arsenal supporters can look to as, uh, <laughs> I'm saying areas a lot here, but areas of growth for him, things he could still improve upon other than that? Well, I mean, I suppose he could put on a little more muscle. He's never going to be a tall player. I think he's, what, 5'7", but is the fact is he can still, you know, adjusting to the Premier League's physicality and getting into weight room, that's definitely something. But with that being said, he's definitely shown a lot of improvement in, I think, the defensive aspects, right? Whether that's pressing or, uh, or, or just, you know, putting in the work off the ball. That's definitely one thing that I think he's improved in the past few months and that makes him, you know, that, that has allowed him to become a, a really important player under Sergio Conceição. Yeah, that was actually something I was going to ask you about because we know Sergio Conceição, how he prepares his teams. I mean, these guys are ready to go to war for him, but I got to ask you, how's his work rate? Because this is something that, you know, especially when a player is coming to England, especially when a player is playing in these sort of high pressing teams, how is his work rate? You mentioned it a little bit there, but does he presses all over the pitch? Does he tend to yeah. go missing when his team doesn't have possession or he stays involved? No, look, I think that, you know, he is not perhaps like uh, a similar player to, shall we say, Otavio, who I think stands out just as much for his work on the ball as off the ball. You know, I definitely think that he's a player who he's in the team to to make an impact with the ball at his feet. But with that being said, Sergio Conceição has never made, you know, an exception for any talented player, uh, you know, in, in his team. He, you know, and he's, he's worked with a lot of them, whether that's Luis Diaz or Tecatito Corona or Meditaremi, you know, he has always demanded that his players commit and stay committed, whether that's uh, pressing or staying compact and tracking back. You know, he's never going to make an exception for one player. Uh, that's just not who he is as a coach. So, and, and especially for a player like Fabio Vieira, who had struggled four minutes last season after after playing um, a string of matches during Project Restart and, you know, he wasn't able to get into the team. Once I saw, made it clear that, you know, you need to improve in the, these areas um, to, to make that impact. I think he's done that with Luis Diaz. He's done with that with a lot of talented players. I think that if, if Fabio can do that under Conceição, he can definitely do that under Mikel Arteta. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with you there, just based on what I've seen of Fabio Vieira myself. Um, but anyways, let's get to Arsenal and uh, start wrapping this up of how you think that he's going to fit in there. Because when you yeah. look at their midfield setup and you look at, you know, the sort of spaces that Odegaard already likes to occupy, for me, that looks a little bit similar to how Fabio would like, or the similar areas to where Fabio would like to sort of float around. So how do you see yeah. this sort of playing out? Will he be competition, or do you see a world where they can both play in the same sort of setup? When I did that long thread, I, I wrote a long thread on Fabio to Arsenal when the deal, right before it was announced, right when the, the transfer link came up, 
And that was my original main concern. How are they going to coexist? Because they're both attack-minded players. They're both kind of natural number 10s. And I think that, um, as well, I, I think that, you know, there are also left-footed players who thrive in those right half spaces. But I think that per per perhaps what Arteta sees is their different kinds of number 10s. I think they also see that Fabio is a versatile player. And I think that Fabio is perhaps more skilled at, I think, unlocking a defense and threading the needle with that inch-perfect pass. That's something that, you know, perhaps Odegaard has not developed as much. So I think it definitely pays to have competition in the squad as well. Um, you know, maybe Fabio is not going to start, but I think that his arrival could definitely have an impact on Odegaard, you know, pushing himself. But, but yeah, and as we've seen as well at Porto, and, and this is one reason why I think he could be a very effective signing for Arsenal. Fabio does not need to be starting to make an impact. He can make an impact off the bench. That's an area where Arsenal have not, have definitely struggled with, you know, having players who can change a game coming from off the bench. He's one of the most effective young talents when you look at his, you know, goal contributions and the amount he's played. Uh, so I definitely don't think he's going to be coming to Arsenal with the expectation that he's just going to be a bench warmer. He's going to fight for that starting spot. I think he's definitely going to surprise a lot of people. I think you're right as well. And I think one of the things that you mentioned is incredibly important is his versatility because that's going to be a major boon to Arteta. But finally, Zach, the last thing I wanted yep. to ask you, um, you mentioned how you think that he's going to have to fight for his, his minutes simply because, you know, Martin Odegaard has that position locked down um, and other players yep. that have been there before him. But let's say in a world where Martin Odegaard didn't exist and Fabio Vieira comes to this Arsenal team and he joins Arteta, do you think that he's ready-made for this team, that he's ready for the Premier League, or do you think that it will take some time? Of course, this is all uh, speculating. We don't have a crystal ball, yeah. but just based off of what you've seen, do you think that he's ready for the Premier League and that he can excel in it as he is now? I think he is. I mean, look, I think that unlike the other players who made the move from the Premier League, from the Primera to the Premier League, right, whether that's Luis Diaz, Ruben Diaz, Bruno Fernandes, Okay, Fabio is a different case because he has not played for his country's senior team and he is also not locked down a starting spot. But with that being said, you know, I think that he does share a lot of the same attributes as of some of those other players. And I think that those, those are some characteristics that perhaps people have not recognized uh, and, and have not given the Primera Liga enough credit for. The fact is he's already used to playing in a high-pressure environment, uh, whether that's with Portugal or with Porto. So I think, yes, the Premier League is a different beast, but I think he's shown that he can handle that mentally. And uh, so, yeah, that for me, that definitely bodes well for how he does in the Premier League. I think you're right. And I think that a lot of the people outside of Portugal don't understand just how the sort of let's call it toxic, I guess, for lack of a better word, nature of Portuguese football and the sort of culture around it, how this mentally prepares these players yep. and going to England. I'm not going to say it, it ain't no thing because it is a step up, but they do have, let's say they have very good practice already from being in Portugal and handling the media, the fan culture, etc. But Zach, I want to thank you so much for joining me for this one. Tell the people some of the coverage that you guys are cooking up over at BTL, especially with Fabio Vieira. You just released a big piece on him, yep. didn't you? Yeah, we just released an article on Fabio Vieira, I believe, just the day before I still announced him. Uh, so that you can check that out on breakinglines.com. Um, we've also got a ton of more, ton of Arsenal-related content, but a ton of other uh, just awesome football content. Uh, we recently re released a piece on you know, Matteo Guendouzi, uh, his resurgence in Marseille, Naya Fagerd, uh, player linked with West Ham in a 30 million move. So we're producing a lot of great content, both in terms of articles and podcasts. And uh, yeah, you can check that out on BTL Vid at Twitter. Beautiful. Zach, thank you so much, man. Again, thanks to Zach for taking the time to join us from his garden. Sounded lovely out there with the birds. And hey, I hope this was enlightening for any Arsenal supporters that want the inside scoop on what kind of player Fabio Vieira is. Very, very talented with room to grow and yet another option for Arteta as Arsenal are sort of dying for depth, aren't they? Thanks for joining me guys. If you enjoyed this video, then you already know what to do. If you're new to this channel, if you haven't subscribed yet, you know what to do. You know YouTube. I'm Adrian, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later this week for more 
videos. Ciao.